Okay, so I work in uh, the, the behavioral health field um, that uh, a lot of people come into a behavioral hospital and within three days they are a completely different person. You can look at them, feel their presence, um, and see and feel that they have changed dramatically within three days. And often they'll say to me, the medications that they put me on here are just so amazing. I feel so much better in such a short period of time. And I'll point out to them that psychotropic medications, the kind they give you in a behavioral hospital to help you with anxiety and depression, that um, those don't stabilize you in three days. They take 30 days to get to a therapeutic dose. You may feel some effects in a couple of weeks, but to really get to a therapeutic level, it's going to take 30 days. So if you're a completely different person in three days, there's something else going on. Some people go, oh, that's placebo effect. They just have been told they're going to feel better, so they feel better. There's probably some of that going on, but I have really narrowed it down to something else, and that is that when I ask people, were you sleeping well at night at least eight hours, or do you have sleep deprivation? Are you malnourished or are you eating healthy foods on a regular diet of three meals a day? Are you drinking water? I'm not talking about drinking fluids where you're drinking beer and alcohol and soda and coffee and other drinks that can de those things can dehydrate you. So are you drinking water? Do you get exercise or you don't get any exercise? Or maybe you go the opposite way and you work all the time and you don't, you push yourself beyond its limits instead of making sure that you're working the, a good amount. So you should be getting some exercise, but you should not be overdoing things like working, you know, 12 and 16 hour days, um, five and six, seven days a week. So. And then isolation or abuse. Are you in healthy relationships where people love you, care for you, and have their, your best interest in their heart? Or are you in relationships where people are using you, abusing you, taking advantage of you? Or you simply don't have any relationships. You isolate yourself from people. So, and then finally, do you put toxic substances in your body? That these are the things that since we stop torturing people who are prisoners of war, we can break a person's spirit, make them mentally and emotionally not capable of controlling themselves and get a psychotic break by just doing any of these things. Any one of these things can cause a psychotic break. You know, sleep deprivation, malnutrition, dehydration, no exercise or over labor, or isolating or abusive relationships, putting toxic substances in your body. Any one of these can cause a person to have a psychotic break. So when a person comes into a behavioral hospital and we make sure that there is nothing going on for half of the night, you know, the 12 hours of the day, the nighttime, we don't really have anything going on. There's no groups, there's no activities, there's nothing going on. You have nothing to do other than to sleep. So out of that 12 hours, we want you to be able to sleep eight or 10 of it. Um, we feed you three meals a day plus two snacks and it's nutritious. We give you lots of water, and some places have no soda and no um, uh, coffee. Other places have those things, but only for a limited amount in the morning, and then um, you can't have it all through the rest of the day. Um, so you're not drinking alcohol, um, you're not drinking a lot of soda or a lot of coffee, um, and so you are just drinking a lot of water and you're, and you're hydrating yourself so that your body can function the way it's meant to. We make sure that we have at least one hour of exercise every day, plus you can get up and walk around in the facility. Some places have a yard that you can go out into and walk around. Um, so there's opportunity for exercise, but it's required for you to get at least one hour of exercise every day, which might be a lot for somebody who hasn't been exercising for years. Um, and there's no labor. You know, you don't have a job or anything that you have to do to where we're working you for you know, 16 or 20 hours a day and not letting you rest. So um, you're not isolated. There's a bunch of other people there 
and those people are going through trauma in their life and trying to recover just the same as you are. So you can talk with them about what's going on, and we have counselors who can talk with you about what's been going on in your life and be supportive. So nobody's abusing you, you're safe, and you're not isolated. And toxic substances, they may be giving you meds that are anti-anxiety and anti-depressive meds, but they're not giving you narcotics and you're not allowed to use them in an addictive way. They're prescribed by a doctor in a very small amount and handed out by a nurse. You don't get to control the amount that you want to use. So uh, by doing all of these kinds of things, the person goes from being in a psychotic break to where they wanted to commit suicide or they were harming other people and then they, were, they came to the treatment center so that they could stabilize and in three days when they stabilized, it wasn't because of the medications, it was because they did things to give themselves a psychotic break. So they're treating themselves like the prisoner of war, only they're also the warden. And when I point that out to people, if you leave here and you go back to treating yourself the way that you were, like this, you're going to have another psychotic break. Especially if you're doing all six of these things. But even if you're doing just one of them, you could cause yourself to have a psychotic break. People need to sleep, they need to eat nutritious, they need to make sure they're hydrated. Water is what hydrates you, not soda, not beer, not coffee. Um, they need to get, everybody needs to get some amount of exercise. So take a walk each day. You don't, it doesn't have to be vigorous, it's, it just needs to be some amount of exercise. You can't sit and do nothing all day long. So, um, and you, if you're a person who does the, you're a workaholic and you over labor, you need to cut back and give yourself a recreation time as well as work time. And then again, you need to not isolate and you need to um, not have abusive relationships and again, stop putting toxic things in your body. So toxic things again can be as simple as if you wake up in the morning and you start drinking coffee and close to lunchtime you switch from coffee to sodas and you do that until after you get off of work you're hitting yourself with an overdose of caffeine and sugar so that you're getting more energy from when you woke up as the day goes on but now you're caffeinated and sugared to the point that you're overdosing on that stuff and you have by the, by the end of the day you have such a high level of anxiety that there's no way you're going to get good sleep that night so you start drinking beer and alcohol and smoking pot and doing, taking pills or doing whatever you do in order to bring yourself down so that you can sleep. So then you finally get a few hours of sleep at night, you get up and you start the cycle over again. You wonder, why do I have anxiety and depression? Because you're causing it. So again, if you treat yourself like a prisoner of war, know that you're the warden. You don't have to treat yourself like that. You could be much better person in much more stable and competent emotional and mental state in just a few days if you would some simply do the opposite of all these destructive things by doing the things that you should be doing to take care of yourself many personality disorders addiction disorders there it's just not taking care of yourself and you can get over it by taking care of yourself